It is, and we are, and good morning. It's two minutes after the hour, 630 KHOW, Denver's talk station, your jack wagon station, 57 to high today, 41 tomorrow, 53 on Sunday, and uh, we will, I am going to go skiing this afternoon, and the snow is coming down in Winter Park. Spoke with Gary DeFrange yesterday, and he said, man, it's going to really be good. So we be rocking in the free world back on the skis. Next week will be, uh, I, don't, I, I'm look, I actually look for words to describe what next week is going to bring, but it is the court-martial of Lieutenant Colonel Terry Lakin. He's a lieutenant colonel in the United States Army. He's a physician, medical doctor, and serves as an Army flight surgeon. And uh, he received orders to deploy uh, to Afghanistan at 101st Airborne. And he said, I want to see the bona fides, if you would, of the president of these United States. Please say good morning. It is a pleasure and an honor to have him with us. Our guest, 630 KHOW in the Lakin case, is retired Air Force Lieutenant General Thomas McNearney is with us. Good morning, sir. Thanks for coming on the radio show. Hi, Peter. How are you today? I'm well. Uh, your background, so folks know who you are. Talk a little bit, if, if you would, about your career. Well, I spent 35 years in the Air Force as a fighter pilot. Uh, had four tours in Vietnam. Uh, involved in some major counterinsurgency uh, or, or counterterrorism operations. My career. And uh, then retired and have... Uh, been in the business world and I set up my own business about 10 years ago. And uh, I'm a Fox News military analyst. I write for the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Times, uh, a number of other periodicals, etc. All in uh, the fight, the global war on terror. You um, have taken on the cause of Lieutenant Colonel Terry Lakin. Why have you done that, sir? Well, uh, General Valley, who you had on a couple uh, days ago, I think, yes, uh, asked me to, to meet him. I met him here in uh, Washington, D.C. I spent about an hour and a half with him. And uh, I told him that uh, I probably would have advised him differently, uh, but he really had a very important point. Uh, he is not a birther. He is a constitutionalist. Now, it shouldn't be the job of a lieutenant colonel flight surgeon in the U.S. Army to be the constitutionalist. It's the job of the Congress and the executive agency to do that. But we've had 44 presidents of the United States, Peter, and only one, the current president, has not shown a valid birth certificate. I, I as I say, I'm not a birther. I am a constitutionalist. There's only one person in America that is required to be born in America in accordance with our Constitution. Only one person, and that's the President of the United States. So it's not unreasonable for him, the President of the United States, to present his birth certificate to the American people. I think he should do that. I do not know why he has not done this, and frankly, I don't know why people and the mainstream media have not queried it. should have been done a long time ago. But Colonel Lakin decided to take this route, and I said I respect his right as an American soldier, fighting man, to, to request the president to make this presentation. Uh, as I said, I probably would have advised him differently. What, 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 sir, what, 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 General, what would you have advised him to have done? Well, I, I would have probably said to him, if I was his uh, uh, senior officer, I would have talked to him and said, you are absolutely within your right to do this, Terry, but here you are about to be promoted to full colonel. Mm -hmm. You had a brilliant career in the Army. Your potential being the Surgeon General of the Army, and, and now you're going to get caught on a cause celeb mm -hmm. that, frankly, you may or may not be treated fairly. And in, in all instances, it looks like he's not being treated fairly. And let me digress one second and say why. Because the judge in this particular case said that I did not know enough about the Army to, to be able to understand the Army's position on the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Well, let me just say that. That is the Uniform Code of Military yes, it's, Justice. It's, it's all branches. It, 
It works for all branches. Sure. Our listeners must understand sure. that. I was a Joint Force Commander in Alaska. I had an Army Division, the 6th Infantry Division, under my command. Mm -hmm. I am intimately familiar with sure. the Uniform Code of Military Justice, but you get a, a judge, a military judge, that says I, as a three-star general who had general court-martial authority, mm -hmm. do not know enough about the Uniform Code of Military Justice. So Dr. Lakin, Terry Lakin, is not going to get yeah. a fair trial in this particular proceeding. I've spoken with his attorney. We've spoken with his brother. His brother really kind of expects the worst. His attorney believes a year in Leavenworth. His brother says maybe up to five years. Um, I think he's got a great attorney. Uh, I think Puckett's a good attorney. But he's not allowed discovery. He's not allowed to bring people like yourself into the court-martial. So what, what's going to happen to him? Well, I think the Congress, the House of Representatives, it is now on the 3rd of uh, January or 5th, mm -hmm. uh, should open this as the first thing on the House Armed Services Committee should have a hearing on it. I think it's extremely important that they do their job, that we don't expect Lieutenant Colonel Lakin, to have to carry this burden. But since he took this road, I have, I have uh, taken up his particular cause that he get a fair trial. I think it's extremely important that he get a fair trial, which means discovery. And since the Army does, will not allow that, I believe in the final analysis that this will be overturned. But he may have to go to the slammer at Fort Leavenworth. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be a shame... Mm -hmm. And that's a great personal commitment that uh, this brilliant young officer and the nicest person in the world is going to have to put forward because our Congress has not done their job, because the mainstream media has not done their job. It is not unreasonable to just ask the question, show your birth certificate in accordance with the Constitution. If you're just joining us, 10, 10 minutes after the hour, retired Air Force Lieutenant General Thomas McNeary is with us. McNeary is a supporter of Terry Lakin. We had General Valley on. Valley also has been excluded, and um, the um, the chief judge is the first judicial court, uh, Colonel Denise Lynn. And I've not that I understand legalese, but I've read her um, reasons for not letting you guys come in, and they're they're just weak. They're very thin. Uh, there is no reason, and the uh, defense team has been denied the motion to compel the state of Hawaii to produce all of Obama's records. Additionally, the motion was asked for court appearances and testimony of men like men like yourself, Hawaii officials, uh, the custodians of records. Also, they were denied the testimony concerning uh, financial college admissions, Harvard, Columbia, Occidental, Panahu School. Um, the, and the people who would hold the Hawaii records would hold, of course, the birth certificate, the vault copy, um, the, um, the, the a list of things. And and it really is. I mean, it's like you want to go into the courtroom and look at Colonel Lynn and say, where did you hide the kangaroos? Well, this is one of the great <clears throat> mysteries, and, and I think you're bringing it up and bringing it on the air is is very helpful for the American public. To understand, you got to read my email. <laughs> you got to come read my email some morning. <laughs> well, uh, and and that's fine. Yeah. But the the only thing you can ask them, why is this president the only one of forty four that has not shown his birth certificate? Well, for I mean, it's not an unreasonable no, question. No, of course it's not. It? No, no, sir. I mean, but Barack Obama has lived almost fifty years without leaving leaving any footprints. There's no Obama documentation. There's no bona fides, no paper trails. Uh, attorney, I mean, the historians call those footprints. They're gone. They don't exist. I made a list of things, and there's a, a, a tremendously long list. Uh, the original vault copy birth certificate, certification of live birth, the Obama-Dunham marriage license, Obama-Dunham divorce records, the Neolani kindergarten records, the Saturo-Dunham marriage license, Saturo adoption records, the Francisca's Assisi school application that got forced out by people like Jerry Corsi to find him registered as a Muslim and as an Indonesian, Panahu school applications, Panahu school records, Neolani third grade records, Saturo Dunham divorce, 
Selective Service Registration, Social Security Number, which is weird because it's out of Connecticut, Occidental College Records, Financial Aid Records, Passports, um, Columbia School Records, Columbia Thesis, Harvard College Records, Harvard Law Review, Illinois Bar Records, Baptism Certificates, Adoption Records, Medical Records, uh, Illinois State Senate Records, Illinois State Senate Schedule, Law Practice Client List, University of Chicago Scholarly Articles, White House Visitors List, uh, Bogoyevich Interviews, and the list, that's just the beginning. Um, there is, when people compare and contrast, Dreams from My Father and the Audacity of Hope and the latest, the changes that we, can be, that we believe in or we can believe in, and none of, none, of, none of them jive, General, to the record that we have truly seen, the so-called bona fides. What do you do with that? Well, the American people have never tolerated this before, and uh, we have every right for transparency in all these subjects. All those issues that you mentioned that were relevant to me, birth certificates, grade school records, transcripts out of West Point, out of uh, my flying records, all those things are available to the American public. For me, I had to, I had to show my birth certificate when I went in the Air Force, initially the Army, uh, into West Point. All those documents had to be shown, and now we have the President of the United States he doesn't have to show any of them. Every person going in the military has to show those kind of documents. We all swear to uphold the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so I think it's extremely important that we remember the basics. And whether Terry is the person that should have led this charge, uh, or it should have been uh, John McCain mm -hmm. or prominent American well, they people were afraid to. to demand this. Well, they were afraid to. May well, I do, may, because... General, let me do this if I could, sir. I need to do a traffic report for the audience. I'll bring you right back. Uh, it's 57 for the high today. We have a Friday morning, 630 KHW, Denver's talk station, traffic or Susan. It's 20 minutes after 7, 720. We have it to a Friday, 6.30 KHOW, December the 10th, 57 to high today, and 41 on Saturday in Virginia, uh, and he is remarkable on and off the air. Retired three-star General uh, General Thomas McNerney is with us, and we're talking about the pending court-martial of Terry Lakin, the lieutenant colonel, who now faces these charges. His, uh, his, his uh, court-martial is four days from today. Uh, General, I, I'm sure you sat in or presided over a number of courts. How, there are people that say this thing won't last 15 minutes. What, what do you think will happen on the 14th? Well, I think they're, they're just going to uh, trivialize it, uh, and uh, it, it'll be more than 15 minutes. But, but the fact is, is the outcome is evident to me that uh, this is a slam dunk. They're not going to let them really talk about it. And... They're avoiding the issue, which makes you wonder. But I think that's important because the way they conduct themselves, Peter, is going to be extremely important for the follow-on investigation, for the House of Representatives, whether it's Daryl Issa or whether it's uh, Buck McKeon, to, uh, to investigate and see the proper way the military handled this. It will eventually go up to, I believe, Uniform Code of uh, Military Justice through the system to the uh, three uh, judges that review all these trials. And so by making this mistake, frankly, the, the smartest thing the Army could do is, is not to have it mm -hmm. and give him, uh, he won't take an Article 32, a uh, Article 15, is just to... Uh, move it along and let it go low profile. I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to make the mistake, try them, yep. and then you're going to have a court of record yep. that is going to condemn them for the way they conducted it. Now he becomes, and I said this earlier and when this all started, he will become a political prisoner. Well, 
Well, yeah. I mean, it'll be like the Dreyfus case in France. And when remember they were back uh, in 18. It was Dreyfus, absolutely. Uh, Dreyfus, yeah. Oh. And and that's what this will become, yeah. unfortunately. Now, Dreyfus, of course, because he was a Jew and he was a military officer in the French army when this anti-Semitism was running wild, Dreyfus is, um, is kangarooed. And um, eventually, of course, he is you know, allowed his freedom and, and, re and his dignity, but he never was returned to his honor. It's a terrible, terrible story. And uh, I think, I'm sorry. He, he's part of history. Absolutely. And, and people understand it. And I think that uh, uh, Dr. Terry Lakin will become part of history. I do too. Not that he wanted that, but that he stood up among many, and we finally took a look at it. And it, it's so simple. Mm -hmm. if people out listening there... All the president has to do is what 43 other presidents have done, is show his birth certificate. Yeah, that's all. That's all. You know, he, there, I, I thought of him maybe like a Billy Mitchell kind of a character, too. Yeah. You know, um, Billy Mitchell's but, career but, got ruined. It got ruined, but Billy was a different kind of person. Yes, he was. Harry Lakin is a very unassuming, very nice person. Yep. Uh, as I said, I spent an hour and a half with him, and... He's an extraordinary person, and underneath that that uh, demeanor he has, uh, which is, is very relaxed in that, there, there's obviously a tensity and a love for America. He has, harbors no ill will against President Obama. For whatever reason, it sunk into him, and being a doctor and a very successful doctor, it sunk into him that uh, he was going to uh, have to do this. And uh, history will judge him well, but the fact is it's been very difficult for he and his family, and I admire the man for it. One one more thing for you to comment. I know you're having a busy morning. I hope to get you back next week because the 14th is the day. And I've posed this question on the air, and I've posed this question to myself. Here is this man, and we've gotten to know his brother quite well. His brother's also a physician. Here's this very decent man who, for all intents and purposes, has done nothing but outstanding work for his country. Uh, he has the um, combat medics badge. He has done so many things. I'm the president of, I don't care who you are, across the street from you lives someone whose entire family's life will be destroyed. All you have to do is walk across that street and show them your birth certificate, and everything goes away. Would you not feel bad for this man? He's being sent, he would probably be sent to Fort Leavenworth for hard time. Now, a man who is, has the compassion to give illegal aliens and their children the pathway to citizenship wants to try, or his Eric Holter, who's only doing what Obama wishes him to do, wants to take terrorists and try them in civilian courts, would you not walk across the street and show a $20 piece of paper to stop this man's life from being trashed? It's a great question, Peter. And the fact is, is, is he is not, and it then makes me begin to wonder, why has he not? Because he can't. This? Because he can't. Well, if, then, then, of course, then Terry Lakin is doing America a great service. If I, I don't believe that I'll see Brian Williams or Katie Couric or the New York Times cover this Lakin story. I really don't. But the other day, this baseball player in uh, Baltimore makes a remark, and that's gotten tremendous attention because he's a Major League Baseball player. Luke Scott asks about Barack Obama's birth, and Major League Baseball has begun to cover up uh, the the out the network guys are treating him like a crazy, but in fact it got out there. There was a line the other night, by the way, by Jay Leno, the general who said that it's so bad for the Dem it's so bad right now for Barack Obama that even the Democrats are asking for his birth certificate. Now, when it starts to make that mainstream leap, it's only a question of time. I agree with you. And time will be very good yep. to Colonel Lakin. There is a reckoning. As we say all the time, historians, the Durants and others, always preach and always teach. There's a, all empires fail, and there's always a reckoning. 
Well, God bless you. Too. God bless uh, you, sir. Thank you for doing this. Merry okay. Christmas. Merry Christmas, General. We'll talk next week. Thank you. Merry thank Christmas. you. Thank you, sir. Bye. All right, everybody. We take a quick turnaround, and we'll come back and open lines. Lots to talk about. 630 KHW, we are Denver's talk station. All right, 533, 27 minutes before the hour. Here comes the new boss, same as the old boss. 630 KHOW, the 10th morning of December, 2010. Your jack wagon of the air. 57 the high today, 41 Saturday, 53 on Sunday. Hitting the bricks, man. See Gary D., Mr. Miyagi, Ski Winter Park. You're getting a ton of snow. All right, um, for the first time since we fired up the show, there are three lines open, 303-713-8255. We have talked about a series of things. We opened with uh, Dr. Corsi, as you, I'm sure, well know. Uh, Dr. Colonel Terry Lakin, the Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Army, medical physician, flight surgeon, walks into a general court-martial on the 14th of December. We've had a number of people on to talk about that. Also, we have been talking about um, this fellow whose truck got taken down in, um, in a reverse sting operation, a John operation. And his story's up on the website, khow.com. Also talking about the um, Orioles baseball player who two days ago t- brought up Obama's birth. And, of course, the cover-up and the screaming that has all begun in Baltimore, trading me as a racist and the rest of this stuff. I'm fascinated by the political correctness, as always, of the country that of asking a question of one man one man who has not supplied any evidence about himself 